previously on Wizard 101 No Damage Challenge. Today, we'll be taking on the No Damage Challenge. It was a simple, basically not taking a single damage throughout the entire run. Without getting hit? No, of course not. The chance would be less than 0%. Please, Fizz. Yes! GG, Rattlebone, you're dead. Peace out, boy. Can you beat Wizard 1 without getting hit in battle? Nah, it's not possible. Eat the sucker! No! Oh, I'm out of mana! No! Being as it's a turn-based game, they all get a turn every time. Yeah, I'd say it's pretty, pretty much not gonna happen. Hit him, please! Let's go! So I know what you're thinking. How do you beat Wizard 101 without taking damage? And trust me, you're not the only one. If you break this game down to the basic, Wizard 101 is a turn-based card game where the objective is to get the enemy's health bar down to zero. Theoretically, if we can go first in battle and one-shot the enemy, we will never get hit. Sounds simple, right? Well, not quite. In our previous episode, it only took us a couple minutes to understand that this challenge requires tactical deck building, perfect timing, amazing precision, and a heavy dose of luck. Using all these concepts, we have proven that it was indeed possible to defeat Wizard City without taking damage. And that was only the first row in this game. Shit. First of many more rows. If we want to beat the entire game without taking damage, <laughs> we have a long way to go. This is the continuation of our journey. Welcome to Krakatopia. Krakatopia is divided into three main regions, the Pyramid of the Sun, Krakos Sphinx, and the Tomb of Storms. Each area is filled with different sets of schools and challenges. To make things worse, two enemies can now join the same battle instead of one. Now how's this fair? Previously, the way we handled a 1 vs 2 situation was using Frozen Armor into Donate Power for Big Hit. The strategy works here, but it comes at a major trade-off. You see, one Frozen Armor treasure card costs over 2,000 gold. Since we'll be fighting over 100 plus battles in Krakatopia, the Frozen Armor strategy will cost at least 200,000 gold. Also, there's no guarantee that one Frozen Armor will be enough for each fight, and that's why we needed a new plan. Unlike the enemies in Wizard City, the mobs in Krakatopia are now tankier and stronger than ever before. But they do have one fatal flaw. The enemies have a tendency to spam weaknesses instead of attacking on the first round. So, we have a one turn time frame to make things right. How about combo in Thundersnake with Monstrous? And that's exactly what we did. Thundersnake has an 87.5% chance of one shot in the enemy, a higher odd than a high roll Ash Bat. Two fights later, it was time for our first boss fight against Bitchy Nerini. Now remember earlier, I said the mobs in Krakatopia loves to not attack on the first round. Well, Bitchy Nerini took it to the next level. Okay, he needs to pass the boss passes. A weakness, please. Let's go! That's exactly what I needed here. I have to crit here. Come on, high roll! Oh my god. We got it, we got it. Come on, crit! Hyro? Let's go! By taking advantage of the enemy's first round strategy, we finished the first area of Krakatopia in under 17 minutes. And one thing's for certain, the next boss will not be dumb enough to make the same mistake. Except it did. I haven't fizzed today, that's great, that's amazing. And he's dead. Please pass. Please, please give me a weakness or something. Okay, now we're talking. Now we're t What the heck? How is he still alive? What? Oh, I gotta get him out of here. Oh my god. You guys see that, right? He okay, this leaves me wide open for the strategy. Okay. You cannot fist here, boy. You gotta hit him. Let's go! He dead! I knew this was a great idea. Let's go! And this was the moment where we may have just found our game-changing strategy. Insane Boat was a very viable strategy since it can one-shot all the Krakatopia bosses, lethal and quick. 
the enemies can cast weaknesses on me all they want. But Insane Bolt packs enough hit points to one turn kill every single boss. Clean. After clearing out the four bosses in the Chamber of Fire, it was time for a deathmatch against Crocodilemon in the first dungeon of the game, the Throne Room of Fire. This was nothing we have faced before. Here's how dungeon works. The concept of a dungeon can be summarized by the following phrase. What happens in a dungeon stays in a dungeon. All the progress we have made in a dungeon will be lost if we choose to log off or exit the dungeon. To get credit for the completion of the dungeon, we must defeat every single enemy from beginning to the end without taking damage. Also, enemies will not respond upon a defeat in the dungeon. Say, if we successfully defeat one enemy but not the other during the battle, the battle will become a 1 vs 1 situation if I choose to reset the fight. So, to make this fair, I will have to reset my entire dungeon if I kill off one enemy but gets hit by the other. Now, how does all of this affect our dungeon run? Turns out, it didn't because we scored back-to-back -back Insane Bolt on both Prince and Crocodilemon. GG, well played. Then we headed off to the Crocus Sphinx, the second region of Crocotopia. Consists of two regular areas and a big dungeon. This was where things took a turn for the better. And we are level 15, let's go! By reaching level 15, we can now equip one of the most OP weapons in the game, the Bow Blade, which grants us one extra white pip at the start of the fight. Up till this point, our mob fights have been sluggish. As enemy starts to have higher health, Monstrous Thunder Snake could no longer one shot the enemy in the first round, so we had to wait an extra turn for a bigger hit. With the extra pip given by Bowblade, the one turn kill strat is back. Monstrous Lightning Bat can now be activated on round 1, guaranteed a one turn kill. Simply put, Bowblade OP, and business as usual against boss fight, just insane boss and we will win. You know what, forget about insane boss. Since I start each fight with 2 pips, and the enemies most likely won't attack on the first round, maybe it's time to turn it up a notch with a monstrous storm shot. It was much more reliable and more powerful, and it works like a charm. But when desperate times cause for desperate measure, Insane Bolt comes in clutch. Let's go! Great, we can one shot the enemy whenever and however we want. Feels really good. By the progress we're making right now, we may be able to complete Crocotopia within the next hour. Or so I thought. Frozen armor. Stick to the plan guys, stick to the plan. I gotta draw that monstrous, and I gotta get power pips. That's the only way we can win this. The next one has to be a monstrous. Monstrous? Let's go! Please don't fizz. Please don't fizz! Let's go! Uh, let's go! And I crit too! He dead. Oh my god! It found time too! Yes! I will never fizz now! <laughs> no! No! That's no, not you! No! 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 Please, there is a minion here. Oh my god. <laughs> we have to reset, boys. <laughs> what the fuck? That was strange. Theoretically, our frozen armor had enough powers to absorb a ghoul's damage. Yet, the ghoul somehow hit right through the frozen armor without ever shattering it. What happened? This was the concept of Drain Spells. Drain Spells attacks the opponents and returns half of its damage points as health points back to the caster, healing them in the process. Drain Spells have a mechanism of bypassing any types of absorb shields, and no spells can counter them. So what does that mean for us? Essentially we're fucked. But we tried again, one boss at a time, and this time, we will have our revenge. Don't hit me with the ghoul, and we should be good. Don't hit me with the ghoul, man. Don't hit me with that thing. Let's go. Let's freeze that bitch. How about that? She's stunned the mute. Oh my god! 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 Oh my god. 
I think we got this. I think this is a crit right here. I got 18% chance. Oh, hell no. <gasps> oh, we got it. We got it. We got it. We got it. Please, please, please. GG! And those four ladies didn't see what hit them. Shagon! Now on to the next area. And guess what? It's another dungeon. Going into the Emperor's Retreat, I know we need a better strategy. So the viewers came in clutch. The viewers suggested a new strategy that may improve our odds of winning in the next dungeon. Introducing the Set Shield strategy. That's right. Set Shield can reduce the incoming damage from the enemy. If we cast the Set Shield after casting Frozen Armor, the Frozen Armor can now withstand more of enemies' incoming attack, shifting our focus towards charging our pips for big hit. And that's exactly what we did. With this Set Shield strategy, we became untouchable. We made our run through the Emperor's Retreat swift and quick. A spectacular series of battles, not taking damage a single time. Five back-to-back -back victories later, two areas down, one to go. Next up is the Tomb of Storms. Great news for us here is that no mob fights. Bad news though, is all boss fights against mostly storm bosses. Great. Since the storm bosses resist heavily against my storm spells, it was time to bring in our Myth Mastery Amulet. Also, we headed straight back to the Myth School and learned Cyclops, a 3 pip Myth spell that deals between 265 and 335 damage. Comboing with Monstrous, Cyclops packs just enough hits to kill all the bosses. On top of that, we even acquired new gears to seal the deal. Look at that drip. Sheesh! And in one quick swoop, every single boss succumbed to the chat powers of the Cyclops. Only one boss stands between me and the showdown against Crocopatra. Hit him, please! Let's go! Let's go! A legendary run. Insane boat for the win. Even the viewers couldn't believe it. Time to bring it home. The final dungeon. The Temple of Storm. Home to the mother of our crocs, Crocopatra. To get to Crocopatra, we had to fight three different bosses. Fortunately though, the first three bosses were all 1 vs 1 battles, so we went straight back to our comfort zone, Insane Bow. It's not gonna hit me three times in a row, no way. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. And we come in clutch, let's go! Come on baby! Hit him! Please! Do something! Let's go! Let's go! Back at it again guys. Switch up our strategy. Storm Shield. I don't really have anything else that I can do here. Oh my god, you know what I could have done? I could have went, oh my god, I could have went back to Sabrina Greenstar and get something else. Sabrina Greenstar has a spell that I can use. I'm gonna make the gambit here and uh, hopefully I can pull it back in. Yep. The motherfucking storm shield, baby. Come on, come on, come on. Let me go and let me go back in, let me go in, please. <gasps> no! Yeah, that really just happened. It turns out, once you get to Crocopatra, the dungeon locks you out if you try to flee the battle or leave through the home button. This means, getting hit by Crocopatra would send us back to the very beginning of the dungeon. We only have one shot of defeating Crocopatra. One shot. Get ready for the run of our lifetime. One insane boat at a time. Time for redemption. All the efforts we have put into this run comes down to this one final fight. No bullshit, let's make it interesting. The epic finale between me and them! I go first, let's go! Fuck you. Fuck you, bitch. Oh my god. I have to get rid of it. Please, be a storm attack. A fucking banshee, are you serious? Don't hit me, don't hit me, don't hit me, don't hit me, don't hit me. <sighs> shit, shit, oh my god, oh my god. I have to find a way to kill him, but he got that thing on him. That thing of a jig. God! Pop it, pop it, pop it, pop it, pop it. Let's go! Okay, Chromecraft! Bring out my boy! You're my only hope here! Bring out the rank 17 Cyclops. Look at that chat, look at this chat right here. Bronze, oh my god, all jacked up. Wait. Oh my god, look at the pips he has! <laughs> look at the pips! 
Oh my god! Wrong guy! That's the wrong guy! Oh my god! Oh my god! Come on, Chronofast! Earthquake! What the hell? A rat magician? You're serious? I guess what I can do is a Cyclops. Let's go! We both combo our attacks against that bitch! Come on, Cyclops. Come on. Crit, 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 crit here! I didn't crit. He better kill him here. Come on, don't fizz! Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go, she did! She did! Let's go! I'll open the path with you. Come on! Have to hit here. Have to hit through this. Don't fizz. Don't fizz, man. Don't fizz! Let's go! Any crit too! Let's go! Ground Claws for the win! Bala 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 BOOM BIP! You're dead! Let's go! Ground Claws comes in clutch! Let's go! And there you have it. 8 hours and nearly 200 resets later. We have defeated Crocotopia without ever taking damage. Shout out to everyone that carried me through this world. Without the crucial treasure costs and tremendous efforts of Backstreet Gaming, we may have never witnessed all the amazing outplays and miracles that have just unfolded. And to all my haters, keep dreaming and go fuck yourself. Though our ultimate goal of defeating Wizard 101 without taking damage was far from complete, the journey that we will take to get there makes all worth it. In the end, that's what the challenge is all about. Thanks for watching.